Hi everybody, um, my name's Rene and I'm going to be filling in for Pete this week. Um, so I just finished playing the Open Trials and I played on the Aussie Women's and Juniors team. So yeah, he wanted me to fill in. Uh, let's head on over. Um, there we go. Okay, so we're going to start off with board one. This is a match point event. Um, so I've got, what, 18 count, really nice hand. So I'm just going to open that a club. Yep, yep, I'm probably wanting to come back in here, so I'm just going to um, do a takeout double. I mean, it's on this hand, it's a little bit frustrating because I don't have four spades. Um, I mean, I could try three no trumps, particularly if my partner has something like three clubs, um, but that only gets me up to eight tricks, whereas particularly if they have a four-card spade suit, they're going to be roughing all those hearts in the shorthand, so it could play really nicely. So four hearts. 11 high card points, 10 to 12 total points. Um, <laughs> I'm not quite entirely sure what she's mean they're meaning that as, but um, three to four spades. Um, you know what? I'm gonna try and bid five clubs here. My hearts aren't, my spades aren't particularly good. If my partner's not screaming at spades, I'm probably gonna try that. Four plus diamonds, <laughs> bit of an interesting auction. Um, yep, okay, more well, my diamonds aren't that bad. If my partner really doesn't like clubs, I guess we're playing here. So I don't quite understand why my partner just um, didn't pass five clubs here. That seems like a pretty, pretty normal auction and a pretty good place to play. But I guess we're gonna have to make do with what we can. So here I've got six club tricks and two spades is eight and the ace of hearts is nine and at least two diamonds which is eleven. In terms of losers, I mean I'm pretty alright provided that my diamonds are breaking. Um, simply because, I mean I'm afraid to get a, di uh, to get a club rough, that they will get a club rough, sorry. So I probably want to draw trumps as quickly as I can. Um, but Provided that's the case, I think I'm just going to play a spade to the king and then play a diamond up and hopefully take that finesse. So now if I play a diamond up, and I'm definitely not going to draw three rounds of trumps here because I can afford to lose two diamond tricks. So I'm just going to draw one round of trump, uh, two rounds of trumps, sorry. And now if diamonds were breaking 4-2, playing another diamond now would be really, uh, really costly because I know the king of diamonds is over here in east. Um, so now I can just play on clubs and pitch away my, um, my losers. And hopefully um, either I can potentially rough a heart and yeah, yeah, just try and uh, go. So I'm going to rough a heart now. And take some club tricks, see how it works. Hmm, okay, I'm a little bit worried now because I might be able to cash to if I play a club now on the rough in, they might be able to play heart heart. I'm gonna be excommunicated. So I might potentially have to try and play for diamonds breaking. Um, this is a really frustrating hand because they sh could, should just pass five clubs and five clubs is a great spot. Um, but given that, I mean, I know my clubs are now breaking and unfortunately in the situation that I currently am, I have to play for diamonds breaking. Um, I mean, there's nothing in particular that would say this isn't the case, but I mean, yeah, the question is, is if I play a diamond at this point, I could lose two diamonds and then they just run a bunch of hearts at me. So, but currently I'm wanting to play to make and I've got six so far um, and I'm going to get at least one more diamond trick if I played a club uh, and a spade, which is seven, eight, but that's not nearly enough. So I'm going to play um, a diamond now and hope for my diamonds to break. Ah, oh, perfect. Okay, so now they can cash a heart trick but I've still got 
plenty of communication to um, to get over to my long winning clubs and trumps are drawn. So there we go. So I rough in and now I've just got tricks galore. Play a club and 11 tricks. Good board. Um, again, it's just, yeah, it's that's a bit of a weird robot thing. Um, they've got a great club fit. Don't quite know why they didn't leave me there, particularly considering I haven't bid four spades and tried to do that. So it's very likely I've just got a single suited club hand, but we made, which is uh, the most important part. If only we made that over trick. Um, so if we were playing in five clubs, we'd have a lot more likelihood of making, um, I mean, you still could potentially have a diamond loser and a spade loser, so it'd be equal because it's match points, so our over tricks are really important. Um, but yeah, 64%, pretty good. I'll take it. So just moving on to the next board. So I've got, what, 20 count here. Um, and my two new trump opener is 20 to 21. Um, 20 to 21. Yep, that definitely says that. Sorry, trying to read it on the screen. Um, so if that's the case, that's my opening. And I'm presuming my partner, yep, they transferred. So transfer completed, two to five hearts. That sounds like what I'm wanting to do. Um, okay, so my partner did three no trump. So they're wanting to choose between hearts and hearts and no trumps. Um, clearly I have a great heart fit. Um, the question is whether I want to be queuing on the way. So they say that that shows the ace of, that would show a 21 high card point hand. Um, so yeah, I feel like I can just bid four hearts here and I'm not missing out a heap. I mean, I've got a 20, 20 count, um, but queen X of spades isn't particularly nice. Uh, so it's likely that we're, if my partner's wanting to play in three to Trump, we're probably not having uh, opportunities for slam. So just on this hand, I've got, I can set up um, five heart tricks and two spades is seven and a diamond is eight and a club is nine. So I can need to develop one more trick in order to get my 10 tricks, but I have quite a few opportunities. Um, particularly I can set up a diamond trick easily enough to pitch away a club, um, maybe take a club finesse as well. Um, so I'm just going to start by... Originally, um, I'll draw some trumps. I kind of got spread values everywhere and nothing I really want to rough. Uh, and then I might just play on spades and then maybe take a diamond finesse. So, win that in my hand. I think I want to end on dummy on this hand because, sorry, in dummy on this hand because then I can potentially take a diamond finesse straight away. My fear on this, because because it is match points, and again, those over tricks are really important, um, that potentially I can pitch away that losing club. Okay, so that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So they've got one more heart. Again, no reason for me not to um, take that out. So I could be a little bit concerned about communication on this hand, but particularly considering I can rough diamonds and dummy, it seems like it's safe to play a diamond now and I'm not gonna um, not gonna lose away my spade tricks. So I'll play that to the queen. They take their king. Oh, perfect. That's nice of them. Um, oh, no particular reason why I need the queen. So I'm gonna chuck that away just to make sure that uh, later on it's nice and easy for me to... Uh, not get myself tangled up. <laughs> it's really a nice uh, handy thing that to make sure, make, make it really easy on both your partner and on future you, because then if you have a slack moment later on in the play, um, it's a bit, uh, you can afford that uh, more likely. So particularly for that, imagine if I played the jack of spades and accidentally got myself stuck in hand or something. Um, it's nice to be able to basically idiot, idiot proof the play for yourself later on. So now I've got the only thing that I can potentially um, gain an extra trick on, so I'm clearly making my contract, so I can play the jack of diamonds to pitch away that club, and then take a club finesse, and then dummy's just going to be good. Um, so if I took the club finesse, I could take the club finesse originally now, um, but if the king is over here, then I'm still going to have that losing club, and that can go on the diamond. 
So throw that away, come over to dummy and take that club hook. Perfect, made. So no harm in overtaking and now dummy is high. So I can just claim now. Uh, we get two more tricks, so I'm making plus one. Perfect. Yep, so just an average board. Everyone else seems to be doing the same thing. Okay. So I've got a pretty bad 11 count here. Most 11 counts I generally open, but the stiff jack of diamonds isn't really uh, counting as a point. So, um, I mean, you're not vulnerable, but I would probably pass this. The other reason that I pass this hand is that my, my fillers are really bad, so I haven't got any 10s. I mean, my, my heart pips are really, really bad, so um, yeah, I'm going to start with a pass. So three diamonds is an aggressive, aggressive wheat junk overcall. No reason to bid now. And they play in three spades. Okay. So dummy has 10 points. And this hand's an opening, so that's at least 11 to 12. So if there's 10 here, I've got 11, that's 21. Um, that's probably a 12 count, at least, on my left. I mean, I could have 11, but I generally start by an analyzing with 12. So that's 21, 33. So my partner's got roughly about seven points. And I know that they have the king, queen of diamonds now. So they probably have at most two to three points outside. Okie dokie. Um, yep. I'm just going to play low. Take that finesse. So I know my partner's only got a singleton spade because my left hand opponent opened one spade. So there's five over here, four in dummy. I've got three, so my partner's got a singleton. Um, similarly, I mean, our partner's favorable. So I guess my left hand opponent has at most two diamonds, if not one. Um, is there any reason that I should be taking the spade? Uh, the only thing that I'd probably say is that this is giving an entry to dummy, uh, potentially to hook up another club, because it went a club to the jack, so I know that finesse is working. Um, and there's no particular harm in not taking my spade. Similarly, doesn't seem like my tricks are going anywhere, so I'm probably just going to take the ace of spades and play another spade back. Um, this is going to cut down on club roughs, just in case they want them. Um, so I partner pitched. Oh, they can't show me that now. <laughs> okay, so they've drawn trumps now and they played the queen of clubs, so I'm just going to cover that. So I've got the nine of clubs here, so even if my left-hand opponent has the ten, I've got this suit um, happily covered. I'm not quite sure what kind of count we're playing here, but the robots probably aren't seeing mine. It's really something important to do, though. Make sure you um, you give count fairly consistently. Um, so I'm just going to play low, but that's definitely something to keep in mind. Yeah. Okay, so my partner's got seven of those. And had two clubs and one spade, so they must have three hearts, which means my left-hand opponent has a doubleton heart, so this last card should be a heart. Perfect. There we go. Hmm, so we ended up getting a pretty good board for that, um, mainly because they're clearly making game. I mean, just looking at the, board, uh, the, the hand over here. So they've got one heart loser, and their ace empty fourth diamond opposite the stiff is just beautiful, works really well. Um, I mean, I guess from this auction, right, my right-hand opponent has um, a better hand, like one of the better hands, because I remember seeing um, that this was 7 to 10. Um, generally, particularly vulnerable, I usually play that as about 8 to 10-ish. Um, most 7 counts I usually pass with, um, particularly considering if your partner has a hand where you're making 3 spades. I mean, they could come back in with a double or you know do something in their hand. Um, this hand over here... I, I mean, it's touch and go, particularly if you're vulnerable, um, but at the same time, it's match points. So you shouldn't be, uh, in match points, bidding your vulnerable games isn't quite so important, but in teams, it's really important because you've got that huge difference between 170 and 620. Um, so on this hand, yeah, I'd probably raise on this on uh, West cards, um, but your partner is heavy for their, for their bid. 
So you're not to know at the moment. Okay, so I've got an 11 count. I'm just going to open this a spade. Four clubs. So this is a splinter. So it's showing shortness in clubs. And of course, he's a past hand. So um, yeah, he can't, we can't have slam or anything like that on. So I'm just going to bid four spades here. So it's nice here that we have a 10 card fit. They're always, ooh, perfect. Okay. So what do I need? So I've got at least a heart loser. Uh, unless I can pitch that away on a diamond, if diamonds are splitting or if the jack of diamonds comes down. And I've got, I'm wanting to play a spade up towards dummy. Again, um, I got most I'm wanting to rough two clubs. So uh, on this hand, I would probably be um, trying to draw trumps as quickly as possible. There's no particular reason um, why I'd be wanting to say cross rough this hand or do something that has a vast amount of roughing. And unless trumps are three nil, I'm gonna be able to rough these two clubs, no problem. So I am, yep, I'm just gonna rough that one. And I think I might play a diamond up. Play it to the ace. Um, this also gives a nice, the queen of clubs gives a nice bit of communication between the two hands. Um, so that if I, um, for example, if the jack of diamonds comes down and my diamonds are now blocked, um, that I can cash the ten of diamonds and then rough a club over uh, in order to cash my last diamond and pitch a heart. Um, so on this hand, I'm now trying to pick up my spade suit, and again, those over tricks really important. Um, there's no harm here in playing the jack of spades, particularly if there is some opponent that will cover that. That's really, really helpful. Uh, takes away the guess for me. So beautiful, perfect. So now I'm just going to cover that with a king, and spades are breaking, which is very nice of them. So they're drawing those out, um, which does my job for me. Very friendly. So now I'm going to still rough this club uh, and my left hand opponent pitched a heart, which is nothing particularly important. So I'm going to cash the king of diamonds now. And now if my diamonds are either breaking or if the jack is coming down, then I'm going to make an extra trick. Ah, oh, perfect. So now diamonds are breaking. So we've had three rounds of diamonds. Uh, everyone followed. So this is the last diamond is high and I can pitch away my losing heart. And now I can just rough my, that club and my hand is high. So I can claim making plus two. So on this hand, like again, we made slam, but a lot of these things you've got to keep in mind is that making slam doesn't necessarily mean that you should be in slam. Uh, so on this hand, for example, on a heart lead, I just had no chance and I needed a lot to work even for that. So I needed to guess spades right and um, have my diamonds work. Um, I hear, hear a lot of people say, oh, we made slam, we should have been there. And it's kind of, it's um, very results merchanty to think that you, just because you make a contract, you should clearly be there. Um, so always keep in mind that the logic behind it is the most important part. And um, in the end of the day, sometimes, sometimes you make, like, for example, in this board, we got a really good result, um, even not making slam. So don't be afraid to, to make extra tricks. Uh, don't think that came out very well, but <laughs> hopefully the point came across. Uh, so now I just have an 18 count. Um, so I am going to open that. So we're playing better minor here. So I'm going to open that a diamond. Uh, it shows three plus diamonds. And this is the only hand that I should have three on. So my partner's bid one heart. Um, so again, we need 25 points a game. So I've got what? an 18 count, lots of aces and kings, which is really nice. Uh, my partner's past hand. Um, and so we don't have slam on. Um, the odds of us having slam on are very, very low. Um, so I'm probably just going to bid four hearts here. Um, gets us to the point. We know where we're wanting to go. And apparently my partner doesn't because they've decided to blackwood. <laughs> um, so my response here, so we're playing zero or three. One or four, two without, and then two with. Um, so I've got two key cards without the queen. So I'm going to be bidding five hearts here. One, two. 
Okay, so providing we're not um, having, so just looking at this hand, so far I've got, my partner's got a very distributional hand, um, still think their, their bid is wrong, um, particularly considering four hearts there should be fairly sign-offish. Um, in fact, it should be very sign-offish if you're a past hand. Uh, so my recommendation is, is if your partner's, if you're a past hand, your partner's made a decision opposite that to stick by that. Um, but given that, so on this hand, we've got one club loser and one diamond loser. Um, the only fears that I would have on this board is that potentially there could be a club rough, particularly on the club lead. Um, but provided there isn't one of those, um, seems like it's all pretty good. Also, particularly uh, to get those extra over tricks, um, if I don't, they don't have a diamond switch, I can pitch that losing diamond away on a spade, my, one of my top spades. Um, so false carding here um, doesn't particularly make have a whole lot of um, relevance. If I had the two of clubs, it would be really nice um, because then if I don't play the two of clubs, their partner might think they're leading from a doubleton, uh, from three to doubleton. But at the moment, considering they led the three, the four of clubs doesn't um, doesn't give the defenders a guess. So there's no real point to false card. Particularly also if you have the thing of you always false card, um, the that idea, um, it means that it's a lot, like, you should be false carding when it's relevant uh, rather than every hand. So, uh, perfect. So on this hand, I've got all of the top hearts. So there's no harm in roughing high. Uh, the odds of diamonds, there being an over rough here. So this hand having eight diamonds is incredibly low, but it's more uh, the point behind it, the principle behind it, that if you've got 100% line, take it. So now I'm just going to draw trumps. I mean, my, my hand's pretty high and I've got plenty of communication uh, back to this hand to cash away all those clubs. So, and again, all the top trumps. So I'm just going to play heart to the ace. Beautiful, trumps are breaking. And so I'm going to play the nine of hearts. I want to stay over in this hand. And then I've had everyone followed for the first round. Uh, three people followed for the second. So that's seven hearts already gone. You roughed high, which is another one, which is eight. There's three more in your hand, which is 11. And I've got two in hand. I'm um, sorry, two in dummies. So that's 13. So all the trumps are drawn. So given that, I can just... I've, I mean, I've got the rest of the tricks. Um, all my clubs are good. My ace of... I mean, I could, I've could. i got tricks upon tricks. So I'm just going to claim on this board. Um, even king of diamonds is high ace, king of spades. I've got about 14 of them. So I'm going to claim. That's making. So that was a slightly below board. I'm um, wondering what the other tables did. So, lots and lots of people were. Some people made six. So again, the only way that you're making six on this board is if you um, if they don't switch a diamond, um, then I can pitch away that losing diamond on a spade. But on the defense that I got, nothing I can do about it. Lots of other people are in the same boat too, so all good. Okay, so my right hand opponent's opened a heart. Um, so I've got a very nice hand here. Um, so I'm going to start with two diamonds. Uh, the reason is, is I'm, I mean, on these kind of hands, I'd really like to get across um, my suit. Um, I don't particularly... Uh, doubling here is should be on seriously big hands, and I don't have spades, so double and then bid shows uh, more than a usual overcall. Um, and my suits here are really nice, but I don't think that it's... Um, I think for that you should have about 17 or 18 plus, so two diamonds looks right here. Okay, so it's my lead. Um, so just to go back to the bidding, um, my left hand opponent with three diamonds here, uh, it's a Q raise. My right hand opponent said, cool, I'm a weak hand, if you're an invitational hand, I don't want to play here. And my left hand opponent said, no, no, I'm that game force. So um, I'm not entirely sure what the robots play in these kind of hands, but I would recommend leading ace for attitude, king for count. So I'm going to lead the king here, and hopefully my partner is going to give me count. As it turns out, though, my I don't need it at the moment. Um, I've got a singleton club there, so I know I can, another one can't be coming home. Okay, so dummy has nine count. I have... 15 counts so that comes to 24. My right hand opponent denied the invite so that's 34 probably around the 36 ish mark uh, for those three hands. My partner has at most about a four count. 
Um, and the question here, I mean, even if my um, I'm cashing two diamonds here, my partner has the king of diamonds, um, it's we're still not taking four hearts off, and I've, that's the most important part that I've got to um, take four hearts off on this hand. Um, the worry here, I mean, my right hand opponent has the um, my right hand opponent has five hearts, so I know my partner has at most a double to heart. Um, so I'm kind of wanting to exit something fairly passive here. Don't really want to pin any of my partner's honors. Um, and my partner, because I've overcalled that two diamond bid, they know when they get in what they're meant to be leading through. So I'm hoping that at some point my partner will have an entry, which will give us another trick, and then they can play a diamond through. Uh, and so we get a club, two diamonds, and some sort of entry of partners. So I'm wanting to make this a nice um, passive exit. I mean, I could try and uh, try and tap dummy. Um, but at the moment, I don't think that's particularly uh, required or necessary. So I'm just going to play a heart. I know that that's unlikely to pin partners. Wow, they have a lot of hearts. Okay, so my partner's pitched a diamond here, um, meaning that, what, 7, 12, 13. So my right-hand opponent has seven hearts, um, which is a lot. <laughs> so I'm just going to play a low diamond here on the heart, trying to encourage diamonds. My partner knows what's going on here. Um, again, these diamonds aren't particularly helpful. Um, hopefully my partner has maybe the ace of spades. So again, I'm, um, I'm just going to keep pitching these diamonds. There's no particular reason not to. Um, perfect. So my partner has the ace of spades and they know where my, where my entries are. So hopefully they can now pump through a diamond. Beautiful. There we go. And now I'll cash the queen of diamonds. And that's fabulous. That's one off. Um, now the question is whether I can take two off. So, I mean, I know that the queen of spades is high here. Uh, so I'm probably going to play the ace of clubs and hope that that will take out the communication um, needed. So if, say, for example, uh, my right hand opponent has uh, a singleton ten of spades here or something, um, then they might need that extra entry, uh, and this would take out the entry uh, potentially to that to that uh, spade source. Okay, so if I pitch away a club, not particularly helpful. Okay, perfect. So now spades are blocked. So these two spades are high, but he can't get over there. It's a bit of a weird play the way he's played it, but we shall see whether it. Um, Amounts to everything. So I pitched the queen of clubs there. I know he doesn't have a club. He's roughed a club. Ah, and he has the last spade anyway. Okie dokie. So one off. Um, that's surprisingly below average. Uh, just looking at this. Yep, seems like one off is the best thing that we could do on the board. Um, I mean, at most, we get a spade trick, a club trick, and two diamond tricks. So I'm not quite sure how other people are. Uh, managing this. I am favorable here. So I aim to take it off, but maybe people are making, they're making five clubs. I see. So unfortunately my partner on the huge hand decided not to bid. Um, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, ah, okay. So again, people are in five clubs, but there's two out of many, many people. So I'm not particularly worried about that. My aim was to bid two diamonds and then come back in with club suit. Um, which could have easily worked, um, or my partner could have easily bid on their hand. Um, unfortunately, this didn't amount to anything. In fact, I'm very surprised my partner didn't bid. So the reasons why on this hand you should be bidding on North's hand, so you've got a void in their suit, which is very, very nice. Uh, you're favourable, which is very, very nice. You've got diamond support, uh, which is a great thing. Uh, and you've got this seven-card club suit on the side. So it's pretty strange that they haven't bid here. Um, even if you over three diamonds, you could potentially double to say, hey, partner, they stole my bid. I, I have some diamond support as well. And then me or South can be off to the races. Um, so it's a bit strange that uh, that North, uh, particularly, it's a really nice um, idea to have that you, when you have support for your partner, show it. Uh, and with a double, that's a fairly safe way of showing it. So uh, on North's hand, I probably would have doubled over over three diamonds. Okay, now back to this hand. So we've got what, uh, 13 count, um, normal kind of hand. 
So my partner with three no trumps, um, 13 to 15 points, flat kind of hand. I hope they wouldn't have four spades this bit, although technically apparently they can. Um, so again, on this hand, I'm probably just going to bid four hearts. Um, the reason behind this is they have a club fit and we've got at least a nine card heart fit. So seems like a pretty safe place. Yeah. So just looking at this hand, really don't want to be in three no trumps. So looking at this, I've got one club loser, I've got one spade loser, and potentially one heart loser, but it depends on how hearts break. So on this, um, yep, they've led the ace of spades, bit of a strange leap, but let's hope they're not getting a spade rough. Again, I'm not wanting to rough anything, so I'm wanting to get rid of trumps as quickly as possible, and potentially pitch away my king of clubs if they don't um, cash, cash uh, ace of clubs now. Okay, let's hope they're not getting a rough, eh? Um, so there's no particular reason why I'd want to be in this hand versus that hand, so I'm just going to take the king. And I'll cash the ace of hearts. So I've got the jack of hearts here. This is a restricted choice um, uh, scenario. So the law of restricted choice basically says that if this honor pops, it's more likely that... Um, that it's coming from a singleton honor rather than from queen jack doubleton um if you know about the monty hall problem or any of those kind of statistic related things it has uh, a lot of relations to that and again this is match points so i'm pretty tempted like to take a double heart finesse um it's a bit touch and go because so statistically it's odds on to now take take a heart finesse and play for my right hand opponent to have the queen third of hearts um because when the jack of hearts pops they either have if they're playing from queen jack doubleton they have a choice of the jack or the queen whereas if they're playing from jack singleton they are forced to play the jack so it's uh twice as likely um it's a bit of a shame as uh, there's some uh re reasoning for playing to the king here simply because then i might be able to pitch away my king of clubs on the diamond but uh, on this hand, I'm going to take the finesse um, simply because then I'd also need diamonds to break 3-3 three, three in order for them to be roughing with a trick they wouldn't usually have or 4-2 with the hand with longer diamonds to have the longer hearts as well. So I'm going to take that finesse. Ah, unfortunately lost. So that's a shame, but thankfully they haven't, um, haven't thought to switch a club, which is fabulous. So now I've drawn trumps. Um, again, misguess the heart suit, but statistically it's better. So now I'm just going to cash all these top diamonds and I'll throw away that losing club. Now my hand's just high, so I'll claim. Ah, it's, it's a very bad board for us, unfortunately. Apparently people are playing to the king of hearts. So... On this hand, I, I really do believe it's uh, better to play to take the heart finesse. Um, again, as I said, twice more likely. Um, so, sorry, it's a two to one ratio. So it's twice as likely for it to be the jack of hearts tight than it is for it to be queen jack doubleton. Um, but unfortunately on this hand didn't work, so ended up being a bad result. Uh, so now if I... I've got a 12 count. It's gone pass, pass a diamond to me. Mm, so I'm going to be overcalling on this hand. I'm going to bid two diamonds. Sorry, pass, pass a heart to me. Said the wrong suit. <laughs> um, my hand's not particularly good. Um, I've got a 6-4, which is a really, really nice shape. Um, King Jack of Hearts could be better, but they are over the bidder, which is which is nice. Um, so the other thing that I don't like is that I don't have uh, fillers, so I don't have 10s and 9s in my long suits, but I'm still going to bid two diamonds, um, and then I'll probably just go quietly. There we go, so my partner raised. And perfect. Okay, so partner has eight points. I have a 12 count, so that's 20 between us. My right hand opponent's open, so they've got 12 plus. My left hand opponent's got doubled. So I know they have at most a eight count, and it's probably on the 11 slash 12 points on my right and eight to nine points on my left. And so now I've got I've got a club loser. I've got a heart loser and potentially a diamond loser, but it looks like we're making at least one over trick. 
and maybe we can pick up diamonds for no losers. So this is looking like a nice hand, um, particularly on this hand with my long and very weak club suit. Um, I'm probably just wanting to rough some clubs and dummy. Um, if I can manage to rough two clubs and dummy and then play the ace, king of diamonds and the queen drops, I'm looking like I'm in a very, very nice position. Okay, so win that one. So this is all looking good at the moment. Um, hmm, choices between playing ace in another club or just playing a club out. I'm probably going to play ace in another club just in case there's a bad break. I mean, there has been a fair amount of bidding on the hand and it doesn't particularly matter one, one way or the other, but if clubs were 6-1, I'd be looking like a bit of a goose. So... They've played the Queen of Hearts back, and I can't for the life of me remember which heart they led. Should have been paying more attention. Um, as the case may be, I'm probably I'm probably going to stick in the Seven of Diamonds just in case. Ah, perfect. So they were over rough with a heart diamond that they probably were going to get anyway. I would have to rough him with the King in order for this to work, which I'm clearly not going to do. So if I play the Eight of Diamonds now. Perfect. So now all my diamonds, my diamond pips are really nice. So I can win that one. So now there's one more diamond out because my left-hand opponent's roughed in high. And now that two diamonds have been played. So I can rough my club, ace of spades, and another spade. I can just rough that low. And again, nobody can over-rough me on my clubs, which is very nice. Um, I'll just rough this low again. So now I know that my le left hand opponent has length in spades and also they're double pointed towards that. Draw that last trump. And I'm going to make an over trick for 10 tricks. So on that hand, the main thing that I take away from it is my clubs are very weak um, and my partner's got fairly short clubs. So as a result, I would like to, like to rough them away. Um, so I ended up on 55.8%. And yeah. Yeah, 5 out of 15. Could have definitely done a bit better. Unfortunately, that 4 hearts, I think, uh, put me a little bit behind, but still stand by it. <laughs> so, Okay, dokie, so that's all for today. Um, I hope I helped in some respects, uh, and Pete will be back for next week. Uh, so, thanks for watching. Bye.